good enough. I'll never achieve my dreams. She's so much prettier than me. Does that sound familiar? If you're ready to feel good enough, achieve your dreams and actually love yourself, then keep on watching. Hey bestie, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Ashley and I help you become your best self and learn how to love yourself. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, then I super recommend clicking the subscribe button down below. First, let's break down what limiting beliefs actually are. Limiting beliefs are deeply ingrained thoughts or mindsets that constrain us in some way. They're usually formed from past experiences, your upbringing, societal norms, or even a fear of failure. They often manifest as self-doubt or negative self-talk. These beliefs create mental barriers that hinder our ability to pursue our goals and reach our fullest potential. Limiting beliefs lead us to underestimate our skills and abilities, thus causing us to play it safe and avoid taking risks. Believing we're not capable or worthy enough also prevents us from trying new things and seizing exciting opportunities because we're scared we might fail. Continuously reinforcing limiting beliefs through negative self-talk can begin to erode your confidence and motivation, which only makes it more difficult to overcome challenges and setbacks. When we accept these beliefs as truth and settle for less than what we deserve, then we are less likely to pursue our greatest, wildest, scariest, most delusional dreams. And you deserve to live your scariest, wildest, most delusional dreams. Limiting beliefs can also serve as self-fulfilling prophecies. Have you never heard the quote, where your attention goes, energy flows. If you think you're ugly, your brain is gonna work to prove that you're ugly by making you ugly. If you think you're stupid, your brain is going to work to prove that you're stupid. Your brain is always working to prove you right. So whatever it is that you're thinking about yourself, whether positive or negative, your brain is going to try as hardest to prove that statement as true. So we know what limiting beliefs are, but how do we actually identify them? Well, first you have to become self-aware. You have to actually do the work to consciously recognize your thought patterns. You have to be able to think a thought and say, that's not a thought I want to think. Let's dig into that thought and unpack it. You have to become aware of your thoughts, your emotions, your behaviors. Self-awareness helps us recognize any negative patterns that can be getting in the way of us reaching our full potential. When we're able to acknowledge these beliefs, they lose their power and it's easier to overcome them. Some practical strategies you can use to uncover these beliefs can be journaling, practicing mindfulness, and using some self-reflective exercises. Even ask for feedback from people that you trust and care about you. Do some shadow work and ask yourself, why do you feel this way? What are some of the beliefs that you have? Why do you have them? How can you overcome them? But also how can you shift it? Instead of saying, I'm not good enough, shift it to, I am good enough. I am still learning. I am improving every day. By being able to first recognize the belief, and then shift it, you are actively challenging the belief and making it easier to overcome it while giving your brain a new true statement. So again, I'm not good enough can be I'm improving every day. That's still true, but it doesn't hinder your confidence or your abilities as much as I'm not good enough. Sometimes we have limiting beliefs that are so deeply ingrained that we don't actually realize we have them. This is where seeking feedback from someone you trust and loves you would be super beneficial. They may be able to point out patterns or behaviors of underlying beliefs that we weren't even aware of from the beginning. Be open to constructive feedback and have a willingness to listen to their insight as it concerns your self-development and self-awareness journey. Now that we've identified our limiting beliefs, let's start to challenge them. You can very easily do this by questioning the belief. Is it true? Where did it come from? Why do I think this way? When you question the belief, the question will lead to more questions as you continue to get deeper and deeper into the underlying answer. Once you get to the underlying answer, you'll probably sit there and be like, that's pretty silly, but that makes a lot of sense. And then it'll be so much easier to work through and overcome the limiting belief. Gather evidence for the belief that proves it true. Are you ugly? How are you ugly? Because you have acne? Where in the dictionary does it say acne is ugly? Do you feel like acne is ugly because society says it? So we've identified the limiting belief. Acne is ugly. And we have identified where it stems from. Society. Do you actually think your acne is ugly? No. Does it hurt? Yeah. Is it annoying to deal with? Yeah, but it is a normal skin issue. I would say 98% of the human population experiences at one point or another in time. Try to find evidence that actively disproves this belief. Another really easy one. Oh, I'm too stupid for this or I'm not smart enough. 
Okay, check your grades. All A's? I would consider someone with all A's smart. You have all F's, that doesn't mean you're stupid. It could just be that you are not a traditional student. You have extenuous life circumstances hindering your ability to focus on your schoolwork. Where in the dictionary does it say your name and stupid nowhere i used to think i was stupid because i got bad grades in high school when really that's because i was fighting for my fucking life trying to survive every day dealing with adult issues as a teenager and the last thing on my mind was schoolwork it wasn't until i transferred to an alternative high school i got a therapist i stopped living with my abusive bio mom that my grades started to improve and then it wasn't until i went to college i was more healed i had flexibility over my schedule i got to choose the classes i wanted that i became a straight a student what evidence do you have that proves your limiting beliefs correct i can guarantee you probably don't have any evidence and it wouldn't hold up in court the next thing you can try when challenging your limiting beliefs is cognitive restructuring which is just a fancier way of saying mindset shifting this is literally just the act of reframing negative thoughts into more positive empowering ones i'm not good enough that is negative i am actively working towards improving my skill set i am improving every day i'm getting closer to the results i want this is positive and this is more empowering it's encouraging, it's motivating, it's hopeful. It really is that easy. You can also dive deeper and do some visualization and affirmations. Visualization and affirmations are my favorite way to overcome limiting beliefs. For every negative belief I have, I think of one positive affirmation that can still be true even if it feels false, which is exactly the I'm not good enough example. I'm not good enough. I am actively making progress towards my goals. Visualizing also makes it easier for your brain to recognize this version of yourself that you currently don't recognize. It makes this other version of you who is good enough, who doesn't have acne, who is smart, less foreign. I'll use a personal example. Sometimes I push so, 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 so hard and burn myself out when it comes to content creation because I want to do this so badly for the rest of my life. I've wanted to do this since I was eight. Life has continuously gotten in the way and this is for the first time in my life at 25 that I have the time the energy to give to content creation. I often compare myself to large influencers like Monet McMichael, Alex Earl, Victoria Paris, because they are close in age to me. I think they're all younger than me actually. And they're living the life I want. And so sometimes I catch myself thinking, I'm never going to be like them. No one likes my videos. I'm too boring. I'm not funny enough. Thinking of just like literally every reason why my dreams aren't coming true yet. Whenever I catch myself in that thought pattern, I just sit, I visualize my future. Every day that I work on a video, every day that I post a video, even if it doesn't perform well, is another day that I am closer to getting to where I want to be, which is doing this as my job instead of a hobby. Just because I'm not seeing the results that I want to now doesn't mean I won't. I've also realized that I have a huge need for instant gratification. If I don't see it now, then it's not happening. I'm a failure. I give up. When really, like, it takes time to grow an audience. It might take six months to get to where I want to be. It might take me another six years. If I really, really want this, then the time doesn't matter. If I really, really love it, then the time doesn't matter. Every time I think I'm not where I want to be yet, I don't have the 100K YouTube plaque yet. I sit and I think, well, in order to get to 100K, I have to get to 1K first. It's not that I'm not good enough. It's just that I had different circumstances that got in the way. It's not that I'm not funny enough. It's just that I present my personality differently. This leads me to my next point about overcoming your limiting beliefs once you've learned how to challenge them. You need to take action by stepping outside of your comfort zone. What crazy, good, exciting, fun, exhilarating, life-changing things happened inside your comfort zone. Oh wait, okay. You haven't said anything yet? Exactly. If I stayed inside my comfort zone, you wouldn't be watching this video. I wouldn't have grown my audience online by sharing a very vulnerable healing journey. I wouldn't be solo traveling for two and a half weeks. Staying in your comfort zone limits your growth and limits your opportunities and keeps you believing your limiting beliefs. The only way to prove them wrong is by literally doing what you need to prove them wrong. If you feel ugly, do something that makes you feel pretty. Like go out and buy new makeup go buy that really pretty dress that you've been eyeing. It might feel uncomfortable, 
but don't you feel pretty? So you are actively disproving that limiting belief of you're ugly, which you're not. Try one small thing every day that makes you uncomfortable. The more you expose yourself to discomfort, the easier it becomes. For example, it was really uncomfortable taking myself on a coffee date a couple months ago. I know that sounds crazy because it's so normal, but I was so uncomfortable doing that. And then I kept doing that. And then it got to the point where I would even take myself to dinner. I would sit, get a glass of wine. And now my solo dates have evolved to going to Canada for the week for fashion week. And that's all because I started with getting the coffee by myself. When you have limiting beliefs, that is also most likely because you have a low sense of self-esteem and confidence. It's usually the people that are the most confident that believe in what they can do and believe in their self. They're the ones that you see achieving everything that they said they would. When you're faced with feelings of self-doubt or fear of failure, your confidence serves as a counterbalance to those feelings, which makes it easier to challenge negative thoughts and push past perceived limitations. You can build your confidence through small successes and celebrating all of the wins. I'll use myself as this next one. Posting on YouTube takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of confidence. With every post I've made so far, it's made it less scary and it's increased my confidence because I'm becoming more confident in myself that is showing through the camera and my views are increasing, which only makes me feel better. I don't even have 1000 subscribers at the time of filming this because I'm so confident in myself. I believe I will reach that 1K. And from that 1K, I believe that I will reach 100K. I celebrated 100 subs. I celebrated 500. I celebrated 700. And I am this close to celebrating 1K. Another really easy, small, I feel like every day example could be if you are dealing with depression. When you're depressed, all you want to do is lay in bed. You want to wear the same clothes for four days. You can barely eat. And if you do, it might be Taco Bell. If you're like me, if you're able to get up and take a shower, celebrate that you took care of yourself because you were able to do that and celebrate that win that builds your confidence for the day. Like actually that wasn't so bad. Maybe I might try making my bed. I feel a little better. I feel confident in my ability to take care of myself. Well, I could tidy up my room. The cycle continues. But with success also comes failure and failure could definitely hinder your confidence. Failure is a learning opportunity. You can't have success without failure. If you do, then it's not as rewarding. Without failure, you wouldn't learn the lessons that you needed to learn. You wouldn't fine tune your strategy for whatever it is you're going for. You're able to figure out what worked and what didn't to make next time even more efficient and more successful, if not the successful attempt. Failure isn't a reflection of yourself, your abilities, your worth. Failure is a chance to work on your resilience. If you can get through this, then you can get through that and you can get through that and you can get through the next thing. I have failed so much, but because of that, I have learned so much. I am so, so resilient as a 25 year old. It took me five tries to get into my major. If it wasn't for the fourth previous times, then I wouldn't have finally proven I want to get in this program. Here's exactly what you're looking for. I wouldn't have known how to fine tune my essay, what classes to take, how to improve my GPA until I finally got into the major. Every setback you have is temporary and it only offers you a chance for more growth and improvement. With every application into my major, I improved my grades, I improved my essay, I improved my overall knowledge. I took classes that I wasn't interested in, but I had to because I needed them to get into my major, but I actually learned some cool shit from them. And that concludes this week's video. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you made it this far, comment a strong arm emoji and any experiences you have with limiting beliefs like any you might have or techniques that you use personally to overcome them. If you like what you watched and want more encouraging content throughout the week, be sure to follow on TikTok and Instagram. If you're looking to make friends all around the world who are also on a self-development, self-love healing journey, then make sure to check out my Discord. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more personal development content. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you again next week. Bye.